All right, guys, it's the fourth day of April, and it's time to talk about the fourth idea physical therapists can use to earn a little extra cash without depending on patient care. So before we get into today's topic, I wanna to shout out to Andrew Tran. Andrew runs Physio Memes. He is a branding expert. He builds personal profiles on Instagram, on Facebook. He delivered this t-shirt out to me. I wanted to put it on because I miss CrossFit. And this t-shirt reminds me of working out. Okay, so let's get on topic for today. A lot of you wanna help Medicare beneficiaries, but not all of you are contracted providers with Medicare. So you're looking for ways to provide non-covered services, and especially in this environment where telehealth is everywhere, you're looking for ways to help the Medicare population without necessarily providing physical therapy, occupational therapy, or speech. One option I want you to consider is working with a population specific to Alzheimer's disease and dementia. A good buddy of mine, Mike Chua, he's a physical therapist, dementia care expert. He teaches a certification course on how to become a dementia care expert. Now, if you don't want to go through the whole certification or if you just want to get a sense for what is available, he also has something called a Dementia Coach and it's $47. Go check out his website, mikechua.com and you'll find the information. But basically what I'm looking at here is with the lockdown, right? With the, the inability for people to commingle. We know that one of the most vulnerable populations is the geriatric population, especially those in any stage of dementia, right? Early onset, mid, late stage, um, the caregivers need help, the clients need help. And so if you could get on a Zoom call, a Skype call, a FaceTime, you can talk and interact, provide some socialization. Now, I don't do anything with dementia care. I'm completely ignorant when it comes to the topic, but I would imagine that there is strategies that you would be able to implement with this demographic to both help the patient, help the client, but at the same time, give the family member or the caregiver a little bit of a respite. So think about that. I know the first thought, the big resistance point that I always hear is, well, that population can't manage um, technology. They don't have to, you know? So I think of my family. My mom's not the one getting on Amazon, FaceTime. Um, I know it's iPhone. I was thinking of the Amazon Echo and, and whatever the video console is from Amazon Prime, but anyway. She's not the one doing it, but I am, you know, or her brother or her sister or another, another um, friend who has access and understands the technology. So it doesn't have to be the client who sets up the interaction. It could be an assistant, a caregiver, a spouse, a, a another younger family member, but we need to get your services out to that population because without your help, you know, they're completely disconnected and isolated. And, and while I don't know anything about Alzheimer's or dementia, I know that that's not a recipe for success, you know, to, to disconnect from society. So guys, think about that. Think about brainstorm ways that you can create maybe a social like network group. Maybe instead of just one-on-one -on -one with these individuals, you can set up a time to have a group meeting. You can absolutely run diff different cognitive exercises and activities, um, even just like a, a painting and drawing class, right? They can set up at their house, they can watch you, you can share your screen, you can do watercolor, you can do whatever you want. Um, and, and I think there's value in that and I think the client will benefit. So guys, let me know what you think. If you do anything like this already, I know OTs and pediatric do a lot of that kind of stuff, but let me know what you guys are doing. Tomorrow, I've got something else for you. Catch you on the next video. See you guys.